G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I'm Jesse. And I'm Jesse. And today, we're giving you... Just the, the Grand, grand final, final Tips. Nice. nice. Join us every weekend for the 2021 AFL Final Series. Live on the True Footy YouTube channel. G'day guys, welcome to the grand final edition of Just The Tips. This is the final episode of the year. It's been uh, yeah, a long, juicy ride since round one. We probably had a couple of episodes where uh, you weren't on the show, where we did it over... Uh, well, we did one over Skype during lockdown, and then another one where um, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. We lost the uh, lost the footage, but uh, it's been a good run. Yes, twenty plus episodes. Yep. I hope you've enjoyed them. We've still got one to go, and it's the biggest one yet, boys. First of all, I do want to acknowledge all the new people who have jumped on the channel and hit subscribe in the last week or so. It's been uh, monstrous growth, so thank you very much. Definitely been the biggest week ever on the channel, so I just want to say thank you very much to everyone uh, who's shown support and hit the red button. So, Despite it being a fantastic week of growth, Druzy, I have noticed that still only about 50% of people who watch the videos have... Uh... <laughs> okay, don't overreact. It's okay, I'll forgive you. Only 50% of you apparently have actually subscribed. So if you are enjoying the content, uh, it only takes three seconds and it's completely free and you'd be really helping us out as well. We're uh, obviously both pretty ambitious with our YouTube channels as well. So uh, any way you can support by subscribing, much appreciated. Thank you. Druzy, the tipping results from the previous round, because of course we didn't do an episode last week. So from the prelim round, uh, you got one correct tip. You incorrectly uh, picked Port Adelaide, and I just I just knew when you tip Port Adelaide that you were going to get it wrong. So I tipped the Bulldogs, um, so I move up one <laughs> within 10 of you now. So you're on 135, uh, you're on 83rd, which is a uh, bit of a stinky sort of finish yeah. to the season. You were going for top 30 at one point. Yeah, lots of upsets towards the end of the season, mm. and uh, yeah, it's fell out of fell out of form. That's right. I've uh, moved up into a commanding 340th, uh, 10 tips behind you with 125. So with one game left, I'm still a chance of catching up. Dad <laughs> is on 130 into the top 200. Um, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Again, while we have you guys, we've had, it reckons about 756 people in the tipping competition, so oh. top half, baby. Um, no, but in all seriousness, thank you as well for um, joining in the tipping comp it's been fantastic we do actually have a winner already drews first mm -hmm. of all i will shout out the uh the winner of the prelims that was cal oc you got two correct tips and would you believe the closest margin was 46 <laughs> so <laughs> i think that means he tipped uh Geelong, uh, sorry melbourne by 37 yeah which okay. would mean he was 46 off um, so that Crazy. was the highest margin someone took was 37 and it was more than double that uh, But we do have the overall leaders of the competition and they're gonna win as well because there's only one game left and they lead it by two We've got the wing it podcast. Congratulations boys 145 correct tips overall uh, It's been a fantastic effort for you, for you boys. So go check them out on YouTube as well um, But also I will be hitting you up in Insta uh, to give you a prize for the last time this year, guys, just know that Just The Tips has been brought to you by our sponsors, Manscaped.com. If you want 20% off and free shipping on some elite male grooming products going into the warmer seasons now as well, a couple of more Sunday sessions might be cranking. You can sort of get a, you know, uh, what's the word? A button-up sort of shirt with a bit of, you know, chest billowing. Out. Yeah, well, no, no, not chest hair. No, chest out. Chest out. With no chest hair. Yeah, that's right. That's the aesthetic you want to pull off this summer. I don't know what the fuck we're saying, but go check out manscaped.com and you can get 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUE4020. Thanks, guys. And let's get into the video. Druzy, the Brownlow medal was last night. We was it? Monstrous stream. Yeah, well, you... Was it on? Yeah, you wouldn't know. Oh, I, I, yeah, cool. Channel 7, good job with the, the broadcasting rights. Did a really good job. And half of the nation missed out on watching the Brownlee Medal, the biggest event of the of the season, barring the grand final, continue. Well, I would ask you how, what you thought of the count, because it was probably one of the most uh, interesting counts ever in terms of the most <laughs> votes at the top end. Um, but you can't even give me an answer on that. What do you think of the overall winner, Ollie Wines? Very good, very good. Now, I uh, said to you before, even though I didn't watch the, the count, I'm just happy that someone that isn't a big name on it, like it wasn't a Bontempelli, a Dangerfield or a Dusty, like, players like Ollie Wines and Nat Fias from, like, smaller clubs, they sort of go under the radar for the whole season, although Ollie Wines was recognised, and he was the favourite. He's not a massive name, is the point I'm trying to make, and for him to win it, for all the brickheads out there, he did a real good job. Yeah, I was happy to see him win it. It's a, it's a player that sort of um, started his career brightly, and then sort of, you know, 
battled through a bit of form and maybe some injury in there as well and now he's come good and shown his full potential and uh, it was nice seeing the footage of his family going nuts mm. uh, of him receiving the medal as well so he, he can't help but feel good for, for that sort of story and I do feel a little bit for Bont and Oliver they had amazing seasons at Petrarca yeah. but I feel like those guys are going to win one eventually if it's not this year it'll probably be next so. yeah I thought it was going to be Oliver he was my tip going into mm. it because uh, I knew Bont and Pelly was going to fizzle out in the last few rounds but Ollie mm. Wines took it, took it out were there any like Gussie Brayshaw spec surprises no, I think the top five or six was pretty predictable. Sammy Walsh probably polled a little bit better than I expected. Mm-hmm. He got the the AFL website expected twenty four. Not that that's a great indication, but he ended up getting thirty, which is yeah. you know a lot more than uh, what they expected. Mm-hmm. So uh, Jack Steele probably polled a bit less than people expected. Yeah, yeah I think he missed the top five. Parish was fifth. Um, that's that's exactly where I had him as well. So mm-hmm. now not too many to, uh, surprises. I think the top five or six makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. David Mundy in his like seventeenth season or something mm-hmm. like that with his highest ever point tally. That just uh, yeah, very very impressive. From most my man. Yeah, most votes ever for a guy that age as well. So uh, very very impressive from him. No surprise, but yeah, good effort. But well, enough of this brown low waffle. Let's talk about the grand final jersey. That's the one thing we came here to talk about. Melbourne are hosting the Western Bulldogs at the neutral Optus Stadium for a historic first time. Uh, at a grand final is going to be played at Perth Stadium. You will be in attendance. Yes. Are you pumped? I am very pumped. Like a tyre. Bottom tier, Melbourne de- uh, Melbourne cheer squad. Bottom tier in both content and seats. Yes. I'm not spudding you. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's very exciting. What time are you going to get to the game? Uh, nice and early. Nice mm. and early. Got, got things on. Oh, that's true. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I, it sounded like a drug deal. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to be streaming. Uh, when I say we, I mean myself, Busher, and Callum. Um, so that is very exciting. So make sure you... Uh, I've already put the event up on the YouTube yeah. like schedule. So 3 p.m. Uh, Perth time. But I think that's like 5 p.m. Melbourne time. Maybe 6 p.m. Melbourne time. Two hours before the game? Yeah. Massive. But let's talk about this game of footy. Uh, this is amazing. I think we've got the best two teams in the comp here. Would you agree? 100%. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. In terms of the course of the season, uh, obviously the Bulldogs dropped away late, but I, I'm pleased to see them make it I think mm-hmm. I remarked uh, going into the finals that if they'd spotted up their season and finished fifth and gone out in week two mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been a good reflection of, of where they're at so I, I think them making the grand final is just um, and gee they're a bloody tough footy team at the moment so mm-hmm. uh, both both of these sides were incredible in the prelim um, we saw up close and personal as Melbourne dismantled Geelong by 83 points Petrarca was fantastic with a goal on 32 Viney had 34 but none better than Maxi Gorn yes Maxi Gorn that third quarter it was just like the ball was a bloody magnet and his hands was also a magnet and yeah. they attracted like what four goals in that quarter they were all crazy goals that he kicked as well that mm. snap that he kicked in the, the second then in the third, that one out of the rock, the one from 50. Midfield craft, extraordinary. The Demons were all over him from start to finish. The Cats barely let out a whimper, and uh, the Dogs were equally impressive. I would have thought that Melbourne, going into the second game, I thought there was no chance um, the Dogs would be, or either side would sort of lift to the, uh, the level uh, that... I, 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 you I were going all right, and then <laughs> you're like running, running, slowly falling, yeah. and then I'm over. Yeah, <laughs> really... Yeah. What I was trying to say was... Uh, after the first prelim, it was hard to imagine that a team would be as impressive as, as Melbourne yeah. in the first prelim. Uh, so the Dogs winning by 71 points in an away final after you know some adversity they've had in terms of um, not only injuries, but you know travelling uh, like a yeah. few other teams have. They're uh, apparently going to be in five states in 14 days or something stupid. So uh, a lot of resilience from a very tough team. It was as impressive as the Melbourne one was the point you were trying to make, which makes this grand final a good matchup. Subscribe. Yeah, they've obviously slaughtered Port Adelaide, uh, reversing the round twenty-three result of that as well, which makes it yep. all the more impressive. I mm-hmm. think uh, the fact that you know they'd lost that round, that fixture like three weeks previous or whatever it was, um, people were rightfully so sort of having faith in Port Adelaide, and you know Port Adelaide just didn't step up to the challenge. Cray had thirty-six. Bailey Smith had four goals and twenty-three possessions. So we fairly confident he's going to be player of the finals. Yeah, Bailey Smith has been, yeah, the best player of these finals. I can agree with you in that. How many goals has he kicked? He's kicked seven in his last two. I think he hit one the week before that, so he's eight in three finals. Yeah, unreal. One of the best runners in the competition. It's going to be a real difference maker in this game, Jesse. He's only 20 years old, played every game of his career. He's got to be a absolute star this this fella and uh, we're, we're seeing it already and don't forget as well that clutch goal to actually win the game against the, the Lions mm. just about so uh, yeah he's uh, got ice in his veins I keep hearing yes he sure does before we get into our actual predictions there's a few topic questions who do you think would be more gutted to lose as we accept that obviously any team that loses the grand final will be gutted but I think there, there are levels to this so uh, who do you think would be more disappointed to lose this game got to be the D's haven't won the fi- grand final since 1963 
Four. Four. They've been the top team all season, minor premiers, and just the moments that they've had this season, beating the Cats after the siren to be minor premiers, all the adversity that they've faced in the last... 10-ish so years. Simon Goodwin was under the hammer last year for not making the eight, and they've all, all the pressure that mounted has made them into a nice diamond. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think, yeah, if they let this slip, there's not going to be many better chances uh, to win a premiership. Considering how well they played against them in the first time these two teams met, I think that was Melbourne's best. They met the Bulldogs at a time where they were in form as well. That second time that they played, it was very wet at the MCG. Uh, no crowd. So I don't think we got to see that best Melbourne side. Uh, the Bulldogs have sort of gone in and out of form throughout the season, stumbled into the into the prelim after finishing outside of the top four. So they're, they're chasing, I think, the Dogs. The Melbourne Ds are in pole position, and for that reason, they will be more gutted if they lose. I think that's actually a fairly good summary. I do think that both of these sides could comfortably sit and say, if it's not this year then there's probably a window of another four years. Mm-hmm. I reckon they could both p- pinch a flag. A lot of young talent. Even though that dog side did win a flag, flag five years ago, uh, they've regenerated their team quite a lot. And uh, I know some of their best players are mature, but they're still on the early end of that maturity, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. And guys like Norton's 22, Bailey Smith is 20. So, uh, And the same thing with Melbourne. Uh, other than you know Max Gorn's on the older end, he's still nowhere near retiring. Mm-hmm. And Oliver and Petrarca are just starting their prime. So, uh, But on the basis that, um, to cut a long story short, I agree that Melbourne have been the best team this year, and it probably would be a bit more disappointing in the fact that the dogs are probably seen as the underdog, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, it may be a bit more gutting for the Ds to lose this. If this game was a belting, which way would it be more likely to be a belting, do you think? The Ds being the dogs, they battered Geelong. The Ds haven't been belted all season. Have the dogs? <laughs> um, nor have the dogs been belted, and they have handed out many a belting, but uh, the Ds are just so strong defensively. Like that, that is the clear area of weakness in that Bulldog side, is that like key fullback. Like Obviously, they've got Alex Keith. When you compare that to Stephen May, Jake Lever, nah, it's not comparable for me. I'm going to add in a side question and throw you under the bus here. Jesse, how much has that 2016 flag played into their premiership tilt this year, or do you think it's just like completely new slate, fresh? It's a good question. I think you could, you can certainly draw parallels to the way they've qualified for the grand final in both mm. years. Um, obviously, doing it away from home the whole time, uh, well, both years actually. Yeah. So the fact that they've maybe got a bit of resilience and belief that they can challenge anywhere, any time, and mm. I actually think they've almost exemplified that more than any team that I've seen, uh, at least when they're good. In the premiership years, they exemplify any any team, anywhere, mm-hmm. uh, any time. Like the, they've been fantastic at that. So, yeah, so that that's probably a factor as well. That being said, there's a lot of new players in that team as well. So yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting one. I probably agree. If this game was a belting, it probably lean the way of Melbourne. But I could see both teams winning heavily as well. I just don't think it's going to be a belting, is it? No, I don't think so either. I was just a hypothetical. A hypothetical. Right. And uh, the Dogs, I, at the start of the year, I famously said that I didn't think they had scoring power. And then uh, they... <laughs> probably been the most um, damaging team in terms of the way they pile on goals. Can you insert that clip? Would you go through the effort to insert that clip? Because that'd be funny. That I'd would like be to funny. see that. Yeah, yeah. I did get criticised at the time, and I think it was almost that next week they, they won 120 yeah. points. So, yeah, that was, I don't know, something something like that. But, yeah, but without Josh Bruce as well, obviously that makes it harder, and they are coming mm. up against the best offensive team just about in the comp. So, um, I agree with you there. How much effect will preparations have? I would argue that neither of these sides have had an ideal preparation. No. On one side, uh, the dogs are obviously coming into it, uh, playing a lot more football, uh, not having the week off, and then they've also been travelling uh, more so than the Demons. And by contrast, the Demons have only played, I think it'll be one game in 28 days by the time they play this grand final. Yeah, so, okay. um, do you see that coming into calculations? Potentially. like The dogs are in the swing of things sort of thing. It's just like the regular season. Uh, but obviously the Ds are just going to be as fresh as a daisy. The Dogs have shown that they don't need optimal preparation. Like They didn't have a training session before that Port Adelaide game. They've been like flown around the country. Like Just terrible preparation. You don't want your teams going through that before massive games like this. So yeah. the, the, the Dogs are definitely an anywhere, anytime side, which they've proved. Um, but I think the Ds, yeah, they've had more mental relaxation and preparation like that if mm. that makes sense yeah that's true I think I'd probably rather have the lead up that the dogs had because yeah. they've still had a week off now so yeah. they, they can recharge but it does help on the Melbourne's case I think Stephen May might have been if you wanted to play yeah. if there, there was no pretty good grand final buy and uh, I'm assuming he's going to be well and truly in for this game Drewzy it's time to give our predictions let's start with first goal you go first 
I'm gonna go Petrarca. Yeah, okay. Hmm. We played it on the AFO Evo. Who kicked first goal? Oh, no, it was Crozier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aiden Crozier. I'll go Cody Waitman. Mm, I like yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, I'll go Waitman. I like that. I think smalls will be a factor in this. Um, it's not about size. It's about how you use it. Yeah, it's more about girth, I've heard. Uh, the winner, I'm thinking the Demons will win this by three goals. Are you agreeing with that? Demons by 32. 32, yep. Yeah, okay. And the Norm Smith. Max gone. I'm going to go Petrarca. Nice. Cool. These nuts, baby. A final question is, uh, could... Are you subscribed? One last question. Could this kickstart a dynasty rivalry? So both of these teams being around for a long time. I would argue that these two are almost the two best set-up teams for the next four years in terms of the best players are still in their prime, or at least the start of their prime. Bontempelli, Oliver, Petrarca, and stuff like that. In great systems as well. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. Could be a bit of a Brisbane... Hollywoodish, yeah. early 2000s, yeah. potentially, not really, but... Yeah, we're coming, we kept losing that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Mm. I think that, that could be, because you look at the last few grand finals, Geelong just sort of always pop up in a grand final here and there, mm. uh, Richmond obviously just had that dynasty where they beat Adelaide, who dropped off, GWS, who dropped off, which you could sort of predicted from those two. This one, I think Melbourne are clearly the better side in my eyes. But, uh, yeah, the dogs aren't far off that at all. They've been the two best sides in the competition this year, and I don't see them falling off next year at all, given how, yeah, this looks like they've got strong foundations set for sustained success. I agree with you. The other thing with the dogs, I guess, is that they just keep not making the top four. Mm. Their their regular season performances um, this year was easily their best, I think, we've ever seen them in the home and away season. They still missed the top four because they bolted late. So, yeah, they'll be interesting to watch, but I think these two teams will be in contention for the next four or five years. Yeah, to think that they're in the position they are without making the top four, they've won a flag and now they're in a premiership. Imagine when they are in the top four. It's just completely unprecedented. Um, It's ridiculous, yeah. It's just an upward trajectory, really, isn't Mm. it? Mm. Cool, guys, that is all we have for our grand final predictions we have recorded an episode of the drew footy show which should be out very shortly on drewsy's channel so go check that out where we team up with caden mcdonald and anthony the pair to preview this week's grand final as well with a bit of a different angle on it as well so it's not exactly the same as this video trust me it's just as good if not better thanks for all your support this year guys uh just the tips have that was 25 six episodes ago now Mm. um it's crazy to think how long that that was ago that our first episode was um, so thank you if you've been there from the beginning or if you just picked us up mid-season as well uh, it's been really really good fun and make sure you're there with us to, on Saturday night for the grand final we will be streaming it right here on the True Footy YouTube channel just the tips 25 episodes give it up for this man in the comments he's done very well to a team be, be, be consistent a team effort so, my queen good job buddy you've done well thank you guys we'll see you not in the next one but we'll see you in the next video thanks yes. guys bye bye <laughs>